Hey, folks, welcome to InTheMoneyStocks.com's intraday analysis video brought to you by the creators of proprietary price, pattern, and time methodology. Learn the PPT strategies and profit for life. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at In The Money Stocks. Dot com. All right, folks, into the action we go today on this Monday, January 6th, 2013. It's about 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Markets are trading lower. Now, there's some key things we need to watch here. Number one, first and foremost, we are watching the market as it's trading below Thursday's low. So again, just to recap last week, the last trading day of the year, New Year's Eve, market made a new all-time high up to 184.69 on the spiders all right then the first trading day of the new year 2014 we had a big sell-off with a low down to 182.47 all right now the key is that becomes your range that becomes the range that this market is trading in and i talked about this on the radio this morning on 8 20 a.m all right, and we talk about it here again because, as of now, the market is trading below that key level. All right, now, why is that important? Well, because if you stay below it and close below it, and the closing basis at the end of the day is really what you care about. Intraday right here, it's below, but until it closes below, you don't care too much. If you close below it today you should kickstart another wave of selling. Now, it shouldn't be a major wave of selling. The major level is the 177.50 level on the SPY. And that's a level I've talked to you guys about for probably three weeks, a month, maybe even more at this point. But the key is, it has to be done in steps. And right now, the markets, if they were to close here, would have a stepping stone down in the coming week. Doesn't mean every single day is going to be down, but ultimately a lower low, which we've made intraday here, but a closing low would be very important. All right, if they rally the market by the end of the day back above this blue line, which is Thursday's low, then you just chalk it up and go back into a neutral stance, waiting for a close above this high or a close below this low. All right, understand, everyone? Pretty simple, right? Pretty simple stuff. Okay, a couple other things to go over. Number one, Twitter. Twitter getting hammered down over four dollars today i shorted this on friday in the research center i put out the alert we shorted it above seventy dollars on friday why well we first off were short here and we covered down here it then bounced notice the inside bar bounce here so you have this big fall with this big wide range red candle this is all inside bar action once it got up in this range right up here on friday that was my short signal and i took advantage I do believe Twitter will go lower, so for those of us holding, I'm really looking for a move down to at least around the $60 level, a pierce of 60 and then I think we can take some profits off the table. But this should be a fantastic gainer for those of you that shorted it with me above 70 on Friday. And this is just one of the reasons why you should belong to the Research Center. All right, It's made up by the best traders in the world and those investors that are trying to become the best in the world. Those are our members. It's people that are open to learning the methodology. They're open to making money consistently in up and down markets. Doesn't even matter. Okay? And the key here is you can join the Research Center by taking the seven-day free trial. Very simple. Seven-day free trial to the Research Center. And you would have gotten this if you were a free trial member on Friday. You would have gotten this. And you'd be up almost 10% on Twitter already on this trade. Okay, in any case, that was a nice one right there, folks. Uh, there are other stocks I'm looking at to go lo both long and short, but I'm not going to discuss them on here until I isolate them down a little bit more. But let's take a look at some of the key movers today because we actually have a fair amount of green. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm looking at my watch list, and my watch list of large caps is pretty dar dar uh, dar It's pretty green. It is pretty, pretty green here. So a couple little odds and ends to pay attention to. Number one, what are the weak plays? Amazon. Amazon.com weak. And this actually looks like there is more downside to come. Amazon honestly should not be up where it is right here. And uh, I'm not short this. I've been looking to short it. I haven't had an entry possible yet. But the break of the 20, if it closes below the 20, 
it looks like it should go down to the 50 MA here around the 375 to 380 level. All right, so that would be your next stepping stone on Amazon. And I am bearish on Amazon, even though I'm not short per se. All right, a couple other things to go over here. Apple. All right, I talked about this in my live broadcast last night to Research Center members. All right, if you're a member, you get access to the No Hype Live broadcasts, which are Sunday night and Thursday night. And I said to them very simply, I said, as long as Apple does not close below this trend line here, it is a long opportunity. Well, this morning it opened below, but it's not going to close below. See how it's rallying up here? So honestly, I would expect a continual multi-day bounce on Apple. Not a huge bounce by any stretch, but I think you're going to get a bounce up to about the 20 MA here, which is right around the 555 area. Another $10 upside, uh, most likely on Apple. All right, again, the key is this trend line. As long as you don't close below this blue line, Apple should hold this support area, at least in the short term, for a few days and uh, inch to the upside. A couple other stocks that are overperforming or outperforming today, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is off its highs, but it's still up $1.62. With the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ all lower on the day, that's actually a pretty good performance here. So again, a little bit of a tail there, although I wouldn't call it a topping tail right now. But Goldman Sachs, JPM, Citigroup, Bank of America, a lot of these stocks uh, are just outperforming the weak market. And financials are definitely the leading in sector today. Right? Definitely the leading sector out there. All right, a couple other things to go over. Let's take a look at gold. Gold is, is deserving of a mention here because of what happened intraday earlier today. It had a minor flash crash. And literally, this, the gold chart was trending up. And this is the GLD on the intraday 10-minute chart. It was trending up. It was having another nice day, almost up a dollar on the day on the GLD, which was the equivalent to, you know, I don't know, five, ten points, dollars on the spot gold price. And then all of a sudden, it crashed. And you saw this is real, a real print. It sold all the way down here to the 117 level. That's almost that's a $3.5 drop within seconds on gold and it surged back up and then it's kind of just stalling right here around the flat line but that is major folks someone made a mistake there and must have done a market order for a huge amount instead of doing a limit order that's the only way i can kind of make sense of it but that is a huge sell and you know most likely someone's getting fired for that one okay now i'm neither long nor short on gold but i will tell you this if you go to your daily chart on gold if we can see gold come back in here and maybe pull back down to around the 116 and a half area, 117 area, I actually think it's a good long swing trade. Again, again, it depends on how it comes in there, but if it takes a few days and consolidates back down, I actually think you could go long GLD for a week or so, maybe two weeks, you know, look for the 50 MA on the upside. But that's all contingent on it pulling back. I don't want to see it go higher. I want to see it pull back a few days in a row here, three, four days in a row, and then I think you have something in the making there. All right, a couple other standout stocks today, Zillow. Zillow deserves to be mentioned up over $5 today. This stock is slowly tracking back towards its highs. The chart was actually pretty nice. See how it got back above the three, these two moving averages, the 20 and the 50 right here? And then see how it consolidated back in. You had the cross of the 20 above the 50. That's a very bullish signal, so I'm not surprised to see it going to the upside. But those type of chart patterns are very, very solid. So pay attention to those. All right, Chevron and Exxon are both down. Let's take a look at oil because oil does have something of interest that I'm watching. I'm watching this level right here. All right, on the USO, we're watching the 3315, 3320 level. It's not there yet, but if we were to see some more selling into the afternoon, I do believe you'll get a swing trade multi-day bounce off of this level here at 3315, 3320. Okay, so watch that level very closely. Another stock I pointed out to my members in the No Hype Live broadcast last night, which again, only members are allowed in that. Uh, only members get daily analysis videos. Only members get hot charts and alerts. And again, that's all under the Research Center. And again, the free trial is available to you for seven days to try it out. But one thing I'm watching here very closely, and I gave it out to my members, was this pivot low right here. Right there, the FXI. This is the Chinese ETF. And actually, I think you'll get a little bit of a bounce back. Again, these are all short-term, near-term swing trades to the long side. I don't want to be long this market for very long. Just a couple days, get some money out of it, and then move out and start looking for shorts again. But right here, good one at around the 36 even number level. Look for upside potential back to about 36.60, 36.65. Maybe a little bit higher, but don't get greedy once you get back to that 20 MA. All right. Once it breaks through that blue line, your next major support is going to be right around the 35 level right down there. Okay? So that's just another good chart I was following there that I wanted to bring to your attention. 
Uh, let me just scan through and see if there's anything else. Chinese stocks, some are up, some are down today. That, that's been a big momentum group lately. Uh, Alt Energy still doing pretty well. First Solar, let's talk a little First Solar today. First Solar got downgraded to sell by Goldman Sachs, and the stock is getting hammered. There's no doubt about it, but look at the chart. The chart told you this was going to happen. It didn't tell you it was going to be a downgrade, but it told you the stock was going to fall. Well, you might say, well, how come? Well, look at this bearish consolidation here. The inability for the stock to get back above the 50 MA off of this down move. Classic in spirit of bearish pattern, downside coming in. Now, it's funny because on uh, Solar City it was upgraded as well, and this stock is actually putting in a potential doji top. So I am watching some of these solars. I actually have some eyes out as potential shorts on some of these, uh, especially Chinese solars. You know, one of the Chinese solar, I haven't shorted it yet, but one of the ones I am watching very closely as a potential short is Canadian solar. I just think this has gone way too high. Doji on the daily now forming. And uh, look at this. This is the weekly chart, folks. The weekly chart a year ago was underneath, you know, $3, $4. Uh, back a little over a year ago, it was down to $2. The stock is now $35, hit $36.90 today as a high. All right, this is absolutely due for a pullback. It's overextended, and again, a pullback literally could be five, ten bucks pretty easily. Now there is risk involved because it's you know it's not a big stock. It's a somewhat of a small mid cap, but um, in any way you cut it, I think it's 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 setting up for some sort of pullback. I just would like to see where it closes today, and then I can make a little bit of a decision on what I want to do. All right, so there's a lot of opportunity out there, and I want to make that clear, folks. You know. We made over 400% net profit in the research center in 2013. And net profit means if you had put all your money in one trade over and over again. So if you had done, done all your money in one trade, then the next trade, and the next trade, that you would have made over 400%. Now, the smart people don't ever put all that money at risk. So you're going to put what we like to do is 10% in each play. But if you had done 10%, you would have made about 42 plus percent in your portfolio last year just by putting 10% of your account in each of our trades. And that's an amazing, that's an amazing feat, really, if you think about it. Really, truly amazing. Um, this year, it's going to be way more volatile, which means way more profits. All right, keep that in mind. Last year, there was almost no volatility. It was just pretty much straight up all year long. If I zoom out, look at this. All right, this was last year. You never even got a 10% correction all year long. This year, you're going to not only have 10% correction, but I think you're going to have 15 to 20% correction at some point. So the volatility will pay us, I'm guessing, easily over 500% net return, well over 50% return this year in the Research Center. All right, I encourage you to come join, check it out. It is one of the elite places. If you're not kind of uh, in the know on how to truly invest smartly, how to find the chart setups, that's what we do here. We take you, we mold you, we spit you out ultimately as an advanced pro trader or investor who knows the PPT methodology and can go on and profit for life. Come join us here at InTheMoneyStocks.com, folks. Take care.